Hello there, I'm Copy, better known as Copyright, and today I'm going to draw my life for you. Obviously I'm the son of a mum and dad, but I'll get to those guys shortly. I was born in the 18th century, so yes, that does make me 300 years old. But even though I've been around for a very long time, I promise not to take too long with this. To really understand my history though, we've got to go way back to my grandma, Mary the First of England, aka Bloody Mary. Now she had a few problems with a chap back in the 15th century. Yes, yes, this is a complicated story. This is part of its appeal, so just hang with me. Now this 15th century chap was called Gutenberg, and he invented a machine that was sort of an electricity-free photocopier, and that helped to make loads of books for everyone. It was a great success. 200 million, 500 million, a billion books in the 18th century. What on earth did people do with all of these books? Did he eat them? I don't think you can eat books. Can you eat books? But the invention of books also brought along something else, something new called intellectual property. Now, what is that? Well, while we're all still thinking about eating books, let's go back to a food analogy. So let's just say you're somebody who grows grapes to make lovely wine. You sell your grapes to somebody else who then presses these grapes into a liquid and then somebody else sells that liquid to somebody else who then drinks it. So the grapes are here and then the grapes are here and then they're gone. But crucially, books aren't like grapes. So when an author sells his book to a chap who then prints it, and in turn sells it to somebody else who then reads it, so the book is here, and then it's here, but then it's still around afterwards. It doesn't get crushed and thrown away like a poor little grape. You can sell a book as many times as you want, but it can still be republished or copied. It's like a magic trick, which later evolves into a gigantic industry. But all this talk about wines made me want to drink champagne. I'm going to drink some champagne. Oh, lovely. So what was it about all of these books that made my grandmother have a bit of a hissy fit? It's why exactly? Well, it was because of what was written inside. Because the book in question was a bit of an important one, the Bible. Somebody had made it so the Bible was written in everyday English, something that anyone could understand. And at that point, that was a pretty big deal. Some people didn't like the idea of anybody being able to read what they thought was quite a special book. And this led to the church splitting into two. So Grandma, Bloody Mary, asked my dad to set up something called censorship. Sounds fun. He set up this tiny clique of authorised printers so that they could control exactly what was being said in these books. Life was good, Grandma was happy, but that didn't last. Censorship expired. Now this was a disaster for the printers who begged for the return of censorship, but the answer was no. So what happened next? They asked my parents to come up with something new to save them, and Dad thought, well, a book is made of paper and ink, so it's an industry. But Mum thought that a book was all about including knowledge, so it was a public property. And together, they had a big idea. They decided to create me, copyright. I'm the apple of their eye. Two ideals mashed together. My main mission is to protect authors, whether or not they want this, and to foster knowledge. Censorship was a big no, but the printers needed something to save them. So copyright? What do you think of copyright? The answer was a yes. Time for more champagne. Now it's the good bit, this was where I was born. I was born in 1709. And they called me copyright, as written here on this pretty piece of paper. Yes, it's my birth certificate, isn't it lovely? And what I do is I give a quid pro quo, which sounds cool, but in English that basically means something in exchange for something. When a person's clever enough to create a work that benefits mankind, then he or she has the copyright for a specific time in exchange for the benefit created. You've done humanity a favour by making something cool. In exchange, we're going to make sure that you get what you deserve for it for a pretty long amount of time. But that's just the romantic version. The love story of my mum and dad is the story that the industry likes to tell about why copyright was such a great, cool thing. But in truth, copyrights are often held by the industries, which does its best to keep a hold of them for as long as they possibly can. Because big companies need to ensure a work's industrial reproduction can happen properly. They need to attract investment and increase production. And often in the process of this, the author of the actual work often has to give up some of his or her rights. This brings us to another problem though. Giving up rights inevitably puts the brakes on what my mum wanted from copyright open access to all knowledge for everyone. And that's something far more important 
and oddly, perhaps ironically, what English speakers call quid pro quo became qui pro quo in French. And to a French speaker, qui pro quo means misunderstanding. Anyway, that's how I was born. Now I want to live as I please. I'm going to become a real star. Just you watch. Watch this. And vomf, just as copyright was applied to books, I've also been applied to poems, songs, letters, sculpture, drawings, dance, mime, opera, films, and so on. Everything, even circus acts. I'm everywhere. So I got bigger. I got bigger. I need a bigger glass of champagne. The biggest you've got. Zooming ahead now to the 19th century, in Bern, every country decided to adopt me. I became a worldwide star. Even the Germans adopted me in the end. That said, it might not have been a great deal for Germany. Before they had copyright, they printed ten times as many books, and these books were cheaper, and that helped Germans become better educated, helping the nation to dominate the Industrial Revolution in the late 19th century. Fair enough, though, but they still decided to adopt me, copyright, in the end. So I extended my territory. Champagne again! More champagne, please. Yes, keep wheeling it in. Mmm. And while I'm on the topic of champagne, human ingenuity helped create some brilliant tools helping me to get even bigger. You know, in the old days, we were limited to just printing texts. Now today, we can record sounds, images, films, TV, YouTube videos, like this one here, and broadcast them all instantaneously to anywhere in the world. And this explosion of media, all of this stuff, all happened just in the 20th century. Now it's party time. Even Dad can't keep up. Anyone for more champagne? I've become the top guy. I'm rolling in money, and when people talk about me, they say, show business. You know, last Sunday I dropped around to Mum and Dad's place for dinner, but there was a, a lot of sh shouting. Mum said that people have forgotten my original mission, what I was all about, and that each of my adaptations always work in favour of the industry, and never in the public's interests. And, you know, I think she's got a point. But then Dad smiled wryly and said, Well, it's better to induce envy than pity, and I guess he's also got a point. On the one hand, copyright does help people make money for the things that they've made, but sometimes it restricts work from getting out there to people. So even though I'm bigger than ever, I'm not really sure if I'm properly doing my job. Anyway, that's my amazing life over 300 years. And I don't look a day over 20, do I? Anyway, now it's time for the 21st century. People still have two arms, two legs, two nostrils, but everything has changed because we now have the internet. Now, just like the arrival of printing, the internet's a high-tech invention that is changing our world at an alarming rate, changing relationships between people and their ability to share knowledge. And it's no longer just about show business. I mean, every day we're on it interacting together. And as for me, my last upgrade was back in 2001, before YouTube, Facebook, or Wikipedia. The world's a completely different place, but the rules I operate on are still quite old-fashioned. So that's why I decided to create this Draw My Life, to explain my origins and mission to as many people as possible. Copyright to encourage creation. You see, I wasn't just a tool designed to help make people money. I was there to try and encourage people towards a goal, and that goal was creativity. Thankfully, it's time for me to have a bit of an update, and my reform is now taking place at an EU level. The next episodes will try and explain complex things in simple terms, like how to fix copyright on the web and elsewhere. We'll also talk again about loads of misunderstandings that are heard around Brussels. It's going to be great, so be sure to subscribe so we can talk about my life a bit more. And even though I haven't earned it, I'm going to have some more champagne. Champagne! Please, just a bit more.